to went to swap and even today as we are talking is in the nwft so your information is not complete on that count at least as for the leadership uh, i think this is the most uh, subservient uh, cowardly leadership we have had in this country for a long time in fact my own view is to a large extent this leadership is not all leadership they've been put there by the americans they have come as part of the mro package and mr zadari in one year has done more damage to this country than any leader in, the, in during their stay so but nevertheless we have to subscribe to the democratic system because there is no other viable alternative we have suffered with dictatorships and military rule so there is hope that parliament will eventually de develop enough strength and courage to remove these corrupt and cowardly leaders either have mid term elections or have a uh, broad based consensual government to take us out of our crisis you are talking of after the budget i haven't heard any of this but if your prediction is true or your assessment is true that should be welcome as long as it's done through democratic norms okay thank you very much for being part of the change if there is any coming in but uh, let me ask you this question uh, let's move into uh, let's first move into the foreign policy aspect right now how do you see president obama's speech and his address to the muslim world how do you rate it well uh, i think certainly for an american president it was a welcome speech it was something very different in tone than any other american president president has spoken so uh, in that sense the spirit was certainly different and positive but unfortunately uh, there are a lot of question marks you know he talks about 3000 plus dead uh, 911 but he never talks about the millions of muslims who have been killed by the americans post 911 i think that was required then he twisted facts you know he talked about hamas uh, having some support among the palestinians the fact of the matter is hamas was the elected popular party of the palestinians in a fairency election that was endorsed even by ex president jimmy carter so and i think vis a vis pakistan he said that well you so force is not going to solve pakistan's problem but he still continuing with the drone attack so there is a contradiction that continues in the american approach towards our region that they say one thing and do another so i think in that count uh, now that they decided to send more force into afghanistan that is going to have a lot of negative effects on pakistan the aid bills i have still have a lot of conditionalities and they haven't yet been passed so we have to wait and see uh how the new administration is different so far we've heard different but we've seen more of the same we see they kar rahe baatein sab tarah kare doctor sahab i was doing um, some literature review before i i uh, was doing your show and i went i went through uh, an article that you wrote in March 2008 what i read was uh, in the article which was titled pakistan first you said our new leaders may want to rethink their desire to forget about kashmir in order to satisfy india of course we should continue our dialogue but let us not outspace india in concessions on the ground as we have done with the us at a time when it needs us far more than we need them dr saiba let me ask you this question i was studying pakistan tariq and saab foreign policy too and uh, do you think uh, as pakistan tariq and saab and in personal capacity as well that united states is involved in destabilizing pakistan is that true yes that is our party position that is my personal position in fact i joined the party because we have uh, i found that this party offered similarity of views to my own view about the us uh, but it is a kasoor hamare humne america ko itni concessions diye unilaterally to zahir hai agar aap dabao mein aate jayenge to america kyun na aap pe dabao dale so hamari badi clear policy to renegotiate have a pehle to policy banaye mere khayal mein to hukumat ki koi कोहिसिव पॉलिसी है ही नहीं फॉरेन पॉलिसी ना डोमेस्टिक पॉलिसी लेकिन फॉरेन पॉलिसी अब खुदा के वास्ते सात सौ सिक्सटी वन ईयर हो गए आप इंडिपेंडेंट नेशनल 
मेड इन पाकिस्तान फॉरन पॉलिसी बनाए और ये हमारी पार्टी का मौका था और अगर अमरीका के साथ कोऑपरेशन करनी है करें लेकिन एक्विटेबल टर्म्स पे क्लियर कट क्विट को कोर्ट से ये थोड़ी सी आप बिल्कुल ले जाए और पूरा मुल्क उनको दे दें ताकि सच्चाई जो मर्जी वो करना चाहे करें ओके अच्छा डॉक्टर साहब आर नॉट बीइंग डबल एडवोकेट एनी मोर यूर वेरी जस्ट इन योर व्यूज now let me come to this imran khan saab has inspired many youth and uh, he has uh, not only inspired many youth but uh, he is also uh, is also been taken as a very nationalist person and you of course as uh, we all say that you but you are the pioneer of pakistani nationalism in a way um, and uh, i myself being a student of your writings uh, you know i feel proud in that too the reason what i what i really want to ask you is this Pakistani nationalism has come to a stage where people have started thinking and have started questioning the current political system aur iske andar improvements ki baat ki ja rahi hai isko behtar banane ki baat ki ja rahi hai ye parlimani nizam kya pakistan ke liye yahi sahi hai ya iske andar kuch tabdiliyan aisi lai ja sakti hain jo pakistan ko behtar behtari ki taraf le ja sake या हम हो सकता है कि वो बिल्कुल ही नए सिस्टम की तरफ गुफ्तु करें ये एक डिबेट है जो कि ज्यादातर नेशनल सर्कों में चलती है कि जी किस किस्म की डेमोक्रेसी पाकिस्तान में होनी चाहिए और आपका फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इसमें स्टैंड क्या है और दूसरी तरफ क्योंकि इमरान खान साहब जो है वो खुद भी सपोर्ट करते हैं और बहुत सी यूथ को इंस्पायर करते हैं वो यूथ को किस तरह आगे उनका रोल देखते हैं एंड हाउ डज ही इन्वॉल्व द यूथ इन ऑल हिज एक्टिविटीज Where do you stand on these two issues? I think that the parliamentary system is a consensus system. It is a 73-page original constitution, a consensus document. There is always room for improvement. But in my opinion, the basic democratic system is not broken. You have weakened your own institutions. If you are functioning as a judiciary independently, if you are legislating independently. पार्लियामेंट अपना रोल प्ले करे जो कि अकाउंटेबिलिटी का रोल भी बहुत बड़ा है पार्लियामेंट का तो मेरा ख्याल में हमारी कमिटमेंट है कि सिस्टम को हम इफेक्टिव करें और हर इंस्टीट्यूशन जो है वो अपना रोल अदा करे अभी तो इंस्टीट्यूशन खत्म हो गई है इंस्टीट्यूशनल इनपुट है ही नहीं किसी डिसीजन मेकिंग में और अनफॉर्चुनेटली अब तो इंस्टीट्यूशनल मेमरी भी नहीं है क्योंकि जरदारी साहब बैठ के एक डिसीजन ले लेते हैं जिसका रिटर्न रिकॉर्ड ही कोई नहीं होता तो दिस इज अनफॉर्चुनेट ये जागीर बना के चलाएंगे तो फिर कोई सिस्टम भी नहीं सही चलेगा और यूथ को चाहिए कि पॉलिटिकल अवेयरनेस हो और इश्यूज की अवेयरनेस हो अपने आप से नॉलेज बेस्ड डिबेट करें नॉलेज एक्वायर करें और टॉलरेंस हम समझते हैं कि वी आर एनिथ्रोजनल सोसाइटी हमारे में डाइवर्स लोग हैं डाइवर्सिटी है इसको हम ये इससे रिचनेस है हमारी सोसाइटी में सिविल सोसाइटी में और इसको हमें अप्रिशिएट करना चाहिए इसको हमें स्ट्रेंथन करना चाहिए टॉलरेंस बहुत जरूरी है मैं देखती हूँ हमारे यूथ में भी टॉलरेंस बहुत कम होती जा रही है और अगर डिफरेंस ऑफ ओपिनियन है तो मार भाग से हम सेटल करते हैं दिस इज अ मिलिटेंट फ्रेम ऑफ माइंड मिलिटराइज सोसाइटी हम अपने बना रहे हैं जो कि गलत है वी मस्ट लर्न टू डिबेट डिस्कस और टॉलरेंस हम दिखाए और यूथ को सियासत में और इंटरेस्ट लेना चाहिए यूथ को पहले से इन्वॉल्व होना चाहिए और पार्टी इस चीज को क्वेश्चन करे सियासतदान को क्वेश्चन करे कि भैया आपका प्रोग्राम क्या है अभी तो हमारी पॉलिटिक्स इज ऑल पर्सनैलिटी बेस्ड देर इज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन पीपीपी पी एम एल एन क्या फर्क है इन लोगों में कोई 